Awesome. Thank you so much, worship team. Good to be in the house of God. If it's good to be in the house of God, shout amen. 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 Not very loud, but not too bad. <laughs> we'll try it again, maybe a later. Anyway, a uh, very special day. Uh, you know, it's so good to be in the house of God. And, and uh, as we head into another season, really sense the Spirit of God wants to do something special in the hearts of people today. You know, every time we gather, it's just uh, an, another incredible opportunity to God, for God to impart in, into our hearts, amen, and to move us forward as a people of God. And today, um, you know, um, and so much of that depends upon the worship presence of God, also the Word of God. The Word of God is so powerful, has the power to change us. So we are so excited to have uh, Eden Fontaine Shimoda preaching today. So will you welcome Eden? Okay, Eden is, yeah, a third-generational pastor. I know her father was a pastor in Winnipeg, and of course, uh, we all know Pastor Leon Fontaine, you know, an incredible man of God, and, and of course, uh, <laughs> Eden falls in the same vein, <laughs> same family. What a great family, a Fontaine family, right? And we're so glad to be con connected. And, uh, Thank you. She's also a mom of, of three kids. We should have the kids up here. No, we won't. <laughs> so, they'll make too much racket, right? But uh, we're so glad, and uh, Eden, we're so blessed to have Thanks. you today, and uh, yeah, you're also a mother of our grandkids, and we're so blessed. <laughs> I have to say that, eh? Thank so, you. So, um, you know, the rest of your bio says you have such a passion for the church and to move the church forward, and, uh, and I believe you really do have a word for us today, so welcome. Thank you. God bless you. Thank have you. Have your way. <laughs> it is an honor to be with you guys today. I know I'm a little biased, but you guys have some amazing pastors. <laughs> I have been very blessed to know them the last seven years or so, and um, your pastors love God, love God so much, and um, have such a heart to build His church, and that's really special because not all pastors are like that. Not all pastors. <laughs> and when God calls pastors, he anoints them. And, and you've got an anointed house here. And you've got such amazing leaders and pastors. And, and that's something to cherish. That's something to be excited to be about. That the body of Christ is um, it's who God's working through, is us. And, um, you know, I wasn't planning on saying this, but last Sunday at our church, we sang the same song, Gratitude. And I was leading worship, and I just felt like God was saying, um, you know that line where it says, I know it's not much? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I felt like God was speaking to me in rehearsal and just saying, but Eden, you guys don't think it's much, but it's all I want. Right. It's all I want is your heart. Was, what did the Pharisees say to Jesus? They tried to catch him and say, well, Jesus, which commandment's the greatest? They, they weren't asking because they really wanted to know. <laughs> they were just trying to, I don't know, show the world he was some false prophet or something. And Jesus, just being the wisdom that he is, just said, you must love the Lord your God with all of your heart and all of your soul and all of your mind and all of your strength. Because when you give him all, that's when you can receive all. So you, it might not feel like much to you that all I have is a hallelujah. I really don't have much to bring you. And look what you've done for me. And he's like, but Eden, it's, it's all I want is you. That's all I want. That's all I want is your heart. And I just, it just ministered to me so much because we complicate things. We, we make things so confusing and messy and God is not confusing and God is not messy. He's so clear and he's so perfect and he's so, um, it just, that, that answer that just goes, oh yeah, that makes sense. And it just, it cuts through all the noise. It cuts through all the confusion and the distraction. But um, yeah, if, if you don't know of me, I'm sure many of you are familiar with Miracle Channel. Uh, our family's associated with that, and um, you, may, you may have heard my father, Leon Fontaine, preach. What a gifted, gifted speaker and uh, gifted man of the word. 
Um, if we preach in heaven, I'm sure it's all he's doing <laughs> because I believe that what God puts in your heart here, we continue to build, we continue to create with him in heaven, and I can't wait to go home one day. But we've got a lot to do down here, and um, I, I love the series that you guys are on, Made for More, and I decided to try to tackle uh, how to live in more, how to live in more, how to have more all the time. <laughs> it's not that, you know, God just wants to give you more in the good seasons and, and when you've got everything all put together and, and, you're, and you're, you're spinning all the plates and nothing's dropping and you're keeping everything going. No, that's, that's us trying to understand God in our, own, in our own way. God wants you to live in more all the time. God, God's called you to have that more, that life, that abundant life that Jesus talks about in John 10.10. 10. And um, if Jesus came to give us life, I would, like, I would sure like to have all of it. <laughs> I would sure like to receive everything he came to give me because I don't want any bit of his suffering, of his death, of his humu hum humiliation to go to waste on me. <laughs> I'd like it all. <laughs> Amen? And, um, and we can have all that he came to give us. And that's good news. That's exciting news. But it's very important that we know this truth because Hosea 4.6 says that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. It's actually so important what you choose to know and what you choose to pursue and what you choose to learn and what you choose to seek in life. God has made you an incredibly powerful being I mean, you're made in his likeness, in his image. And when you begin to know what God knows and you begin to know some things, it completely changes your life. It completely changes how you see things, what you desire, what you know, what you thought you knew. And then when you start to learn the word and you start to open up all of your heart to God and you start to give him more and you realize, man, he... He, he already knows me, so why do I think I can play hide and seek with him? He, he knows how many hairs are on my head, or if I don't have hair on my head for some of you. He knows it all. He knows, and, um, and yet I don't know why we're so scared to think that we could hide parts from him. And he's like, just, I can handle it. Give it all to me, and I'll show you how to overcome some of those insecurities or how to break free from addictions or hang-ups or mistakes that you are so um, afraid to say that you made because I can, I can bring wholeness to your life. I can bring peace to those troubled areas if you give me everything, if you give me all, right? And so we need to decide that I don't know everything. You don't know everything. And if you think you do, you'll, you'll, you'll hit a point in your life where you go, oh yeah, I didn't know everything. <laughs> that, is, uh, that is pride and pride comes before a fall. And pride is the greatest enemy of your relationship with God, thinking that you can do things in your own strength, in your own power, when God calls you to do life with him. And so it's really important that we decide, I need, I need to know things. I can know things. And I need to make sure that I know the right things. Because, I mean, we've all met that person who thinks they know things. And you're like, oh, man, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, <laughs> right? We don't want to be that guy. <laughs> we don't want to be that person that gets so built up in what we think we know. No, we need to make sure we know the truth because Jesus said it, the truth that you know will set you free. Truth doesn't set you free. The truth you know. The truth you know. The truth you receive. The truth you live on. The truth you say because God said it, I believe it. I'm going to take him at his word. Even if I don't understand how it works, even if my feelings are screaming at me a different way, I want all that he came to give me. And so if he says it, I believe it. If he says this is how I should walk, this is how I'm going to walk. Even if people um, persecute me, it's a good thing if people persecute you because it means you're doing something right. And we get so caught up in so many things. And when we get a little perspective, we realize... What did, I, what did I allow to hold me back? Wow, look at what God made me. Look how he made me to be. And if we're going to live in more, we have to decide. We have to understand that what I don't know could be killing me. What I don't know could be destroying my marriage, could be destroying what I set my hands to. Because I'm 
all caught up in what I think I know, but what is it that I don't know? What is it that I don't know about God's word and his truth? And Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So what do we need to know? Every word that comes from the mouth of God. That's where we go to find out what we need to know (laughs) is the word of God, because it's the only book that is full of his spirit, that is full of life and power. It says it's active, so it meets you in your situation. It, it's not old. It's not historic or outdated. It's his power. It's his spirit. And when you open it and you seek to know it, it will meet you right in the middle of your situation, right in the middle of what you feel is too hard. The word tailors itself. When you seek it and you want to know it, the word literally, God's spirit will teach it to you tailor-made, wait, right the way you need to hear it. When you seek him and you go, God, what does this mean? Lord, show me as I meditate, as I pray, as I just yield this to you and I stop trying to do it in my own strength. So I want to make that really clear that everything I'm teaching from today, it's from the word of God. The world doesn't need more motivational speakers. <laughs> I don't want to be a motivational speaker. <laughs> the world needs more teachers of God's word, people who say, I want your words to be my words. And every believer needs to say this. This is for everyone. Lord, your word needs to be my word. You're what you say, I'm going to say. And that's what he's calling us into today. And that's how we live in more. So the truth you know sets you free. So my question is, what's the truth you don't know? What's the truth you don't know for your marriage, for your family, for your business, for your thought life, for your feelings? Because we live in a world that will tell you to own your truth. Oh, how you feel today. Oh yeah, you probably should just, that's probably what it is, Eden. You should just cry today. It's a hard day. Just, it just is what it is. It's the truth for today. And we live in a world that is so anti-God And you need to get that straight. You need to understand that the way the world thinks, the way that people who don't serve God think is so opposite to the word of God that if you are not filling yourself with the truth, they will start to sound, oh, yeah, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe, maybe, maybe God is just, you know, picking and choosing and Gosh, you don't know your Bible then, if that's what you think. Because if you know the truth, the moment a lie comes to you, the moment come, someone comes to steal, kill, and destroy, because that that's the only reason the thief comes, Jesus said, is to steal, kill, and destroy. He's coming to take it. And it's not his, it's yours. <laughs> but so many Christians don't even know it's theirs. Life is mine. And I don't have to give it to him. But if I let him fool me, if I don't know the truth... I can't be set free. And here's what excites me so much. That's in my power. It's in your power to know. No, no, there's no roadblocks to living in more. There is nothing that can stop you from living in more except you. Except your limiting beliefs, your thoughts, you, who you choose to listen to. Because if you're not guarding your heart, you're letting all the things that people say, the TV shows you watch, the, um, the things, the, the, the conversations that you entertain, the people you talk about, or the doubt that you speak out, whatever you are doing, <laughs> we need to be so vigilant. Jesus, in the Bible, it says, be diligent at guarding your heart because out of it, flows the issues of your life. And so we can do this. If the Bible says you can do it, you can do it. And that's what I have found to be so freeing is just taking God at his word and not giving him excuses. You look at the life of Moses when God came to show Moses what he needed him to do. And man, he gave excuse after excuse. And I don't want to be that person. I like When you look at what God could do through people who finally surrendered to him, and it took God a couple times sometimes with people, and it's like, I'm scratching my head going, the God of the universe is talking to you right now, having a full-on conversation, and you're just giving excuses for why you can't do it. I mean, you're having a conversation with God. Like, I think if he's called you, he's He's, I'm going to go with you, he said to Moses. You're not going by yourself, but we make excuses, and I don't want to be that person. So when we seek to try to figure it out, that's us trying to do it in our own power. What I have found is the more I surrender and the more I don't care how he's going to do it, oh, Lord, you are, 
you are greater. You know how this is going to work out. You know how you're going to use me. And I just need to, I know it's not much, <laughs> but all that I have, I'm going to give to you. I'm going to surrender my heart. And what you can do with my heart is far greater than what I think I can do in my own effort, in my own strength. So I want to tackle... Um, Three things that you need to know if you want to live in more, and you need to know God. You need to know all that he is, and you need to know that he is your heavenly father. If you don't get that straight from the get-go, it's going to be messy. <laughs> he is your source, and religion has probably taught, taught many of you, I don't know how you grew up. I don't know if you grew up with no faith or with religion. Religion's awful. Religion just causes so much issues in the church. Um, and you need to come to a point where you use the word of God as your standard for everything. If someone tells me who God is, show me places in the scripture where it says that. That this is my authority on everything. This is my standard. This is how I make decisions. This is how I understand things. And if I want to know who God is, I need to go to his word and let him tell me who he is. I have no right going to somebody else and asking them who God is. I need to go straight to the source. I, I'm giving my, why would I ever give my heart to somebody else to pour into who God is when I can go straight to him? And this is the exciting thing because in the beginning, God, not Elon Musk, not Bill Gates, not all the people who want to tell you that they know how to give you life and how what we need to do next. And if you're not careful and you don't shut off those noises, you don't shut off those voices, you need to know in the beginning, God. <laughs> in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Not me. <laughs> not anybody who proclaims to say that they know how to do it and they can. The, man's actually trying to create life in test tubes. I'm like, oh, you be careful. You be careful, you are not God. <laughs> and you're gonna find that out the hard way. Uh, so we need to get things straight. In the beginning, God, God created the heavens and the earth and we can know God. Daniel 11:32 says, the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. So what does that say? That God is a knowable God. What does religion do? separate you. Religion makes you feel like God is so far away that you have to deserve him, that you have to work for him, that you have to get your life in order, and then he will move in your life. All these lies, all these things that don't even, even come close to the goodness of God and who he says he is. And if you want to live in more, you have to take God at his word for who he says he is. You can't say God is good and then say he did something bad. You can't, it doesn't work. That's not who he is. You can't say God is the giver of life and then say, well, he took, he took my child home. He, he took my dad home. No, God did not call my dad home. The thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. God is the author of life. God wishes above all things that you'd prosper and be in health. So we have to get things straight at that foundation because out of him, is everything comes out of him. And it's so important for your own sake, for your ability to live in more, that you be blessed by who he is, that you receive all that he is in this word and that we can know him. That's a promise. It says the people who know their God, it's up to you how much you wanna know him. That's so exciting to me. There's no end to God. It says it's gonna take eternity for him to show us just how great he is and just how much he loves us and all that he can do. I'm excited for that. So you can draw from him. You can know him. I mean, we should understand this, right? I can, I can get to know my husband as much as I want to get to know my husband, or I could just eh, go through life. I do my thing. He does his thing. Or I could spend time with him and ask him questions and how do you see it and that is this relationship with God. We need to know him and realize that we can know him and that God never plays hide and seek, never ever. That he wants you to know him, that he's there always. Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. We serve a God 
who never wanted to be without you, that in the moment of our greatest weakness, where Adam and Eve were lied to and deceived, God put a plan in place to get us back. That's how much he loves you. That's how much he wanted to never leave you. And yet we come up with reasons why, well, but I said this the other day to somebody and I thought this thought and no, 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 it's not about you and how good you are and how perfectly you can live. It's about him, that he's perfect, that he's love, that he's joy and that he made you. So let's get things straight. He's the one who made you. So why would I go to anybody else to try to figure things out? I need to go to him because I can know him and when I know him, I'm strong. I'm strong. No matter the situation, no matter what life brings, no matter what people try to say to me, I am strong in him. Romans 3, 4, one of my favorite verses. You're probably going to hear me say that a lot. <laughs> Let God be true and every man a liar. That has got to be so strong in your heart that like no matter what you say, I mean, I'm not calling people liars to their faces. We, gotta, we walk with love. That is what we are called to do. But I mean, there was a time where Jesus called Peter, <laughs> get behind me, Satan. There are times where you have to take a stand for how you protect your heart. But we need to get to the place where if God didn't say it, if it's not in his word, I don't believe it. I don't trust it. Because God is truth, and the truth I know sets me free. He is the source of all truth. And if I stick with him, I'm strong. And I'm going to do great exploits. I'm going to have adventures. I'm going to just live the life that he dreamed of, and that's far greater, I have found, in my almost 40 years. It's far greater than anything I could come up with. Um, Isaiah 41, 13 says, For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand saying to you, fear not, I will help you. That's your God. That's the God you know, that I want to hold your hand. I'm going to hold your hand through life. Thank you, Jesus. I've got three young kids, so a lot of these verses really speak to me right now in this season because they're at that age where they just want to hold your hand all the time. And, and God, God ministered to me one day and just said, Eden, that's exactly how I see you. You know, when you hold your daughter's hand and you think, okay, she's mine. I'm showing the world she's safe. I'm protecting her. She's with me. I love her. That's exactly what God's saying when he says, I will hold your right hand. I love you. I've got you. I'm your father. I'm going to help you. So if you don't know this about God, there's no way you can live in more. You have to know who he is. Because if you don't know that he's the author of life, if you don't know that it's the thief that comes to steal, kill, and destroy, there's, you're not going to live in the abundance if you're confused about who he is. And you can know who he is by going to his word, by opening up your heart to him and not being scared to show him everything, to give him everything. Because God loves you. God did not come into this world to condemn the world, but to save it. So when our heart receives that and we realize, God, you don't condemn me. <laughs> Holy Spirit convicts you that you need Jesus. Not that you're some horrible person. <laughs> not that, you know, he just shows you you need a savior. You were always designed to be with God. And when we understand that, Genesis 1 says, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Who's our? God the Father, Jesus the Son, the Holy Spirit. We're made in the likeness and the image of God. And he put, it, he put them in a garden and he blessed them. You are blessed by the creator of the universe. Since the beginning of humanity, God blessed us. And he said, be fruitful and multiply. What did he say? Live in more. You're made for more. You're not made to just live here and just maintain and just wait, you know, just wait on, just let, let God do everything. No, he gave you a mission and he gave you something that he made you to do. So it's in you to do that I can be fruitful. I can multiply in my life. And then he said, have dominion over the earth. He gave man dominion from the get-go. I mean, I don't have time to get into this, but our authority, all that God's given us, man, when a Christian wakes up to their authority in Jesus, they become unstoppable. 
That's how you really live in more is you understand that God made me. I think it's so, I mean, it's not funny, but I think it's kind of funny that a serpent came in and said to Eve, if you eat from this tree, God knows you're going to be like him. I'm like, what? Eve, God just said you were made like him. You were made in his likeness. How did you ever, how did you ever? (laughs) What she should have done is go, God, who's this ugly serpent thing that showed up? And what is he talking about? (laughs) Well, you made me. What do you say I am? Who do you say I am? Like we sang today. That's who I am. I don't know what this thing is. Um, But God in his, in his mercy and in his love didn't leave us there. He, he, he brought Jesus for God so loved the world. That's every single human being. He loved everyone that he wanted to save us, that he wanted to offer us another way to have life abundant. But it's important that we know the origin, that in the beginning, what God said to Adam was, if you eat this fruit, you'll surely die. Did Adam die when he ate the fruit? No, physically he did not. So we have to see that in his spirit, he died. He was severed from God, right? That's where the death took place. So what was your original purpose? What were you designed for? To be a temple of God. That from the very moment you were designed, that you were never designed to do life in your own power, in your own strength. You were designed to be part of God's family and to live out of the overflow of him, to let him walk and talk with you in the garden. And you know, that original design, which we are going to enjoy in perfection in heaven one day. But Jesus said we could bring heaven to earth that the kingdom of heaven can be lived on earth. And I would hate to see his church just live in enough, live in maintenance mode, live in, well, this is just how it is. No, you're not pushing hard enough. You can know him. You can know exactly what it means that Jesus healed you at the cross. You can know exactly what it means to have perfect peace. He will keep keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. If you can keep your mind on him, then you can keep your mind on him. If he says you can do it, you can do it. And I have found that making this decision in my life has saved me from so many um, twists and turns that the world has tried to bring my way. When you make a decision at the beginning, you don't have to keep revisiting it and going, oh, is that what I believe? Is that? No, I decided that if God says that I am his, if God says I'm called, if God says that I'm anointed, if God says that I live by faith, then that's what I do. So the power of making a decision right at the beginning, and when you get that confidence, how did I get that confidence? Not in myself, it's because I kept filling myself with the word, and what you'll find as you know your God, you get confident in your God. If he is good, you should expect him to be good in your life. If he is love, you should expect him to love you every moment, every second, and you should look for it in your life. So when we get this straight, when we understand, I should know this, Eden, and you can know this, and nothing's stopping you except you, it will set you free, because the truth you know sets you free. And you can know things. You can increase your knowledge. Amen. I'm so grateful for that. Um, I got to wrap up, but Jeremiah 29 says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. God knows the thoughts and we can know God. We can know God and his thoughts for you are peace to give you a hope and a future. That sounds like more to me. That sounds like God's calling you to live in more. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. There literally is no limit to how much you can draw on God, to how much you can know him, to how much you can receive from him. You are the deciding factor, not him. Not him. Because God already went all in with you. Already. Already done. What did Jesus say? It's finished. It's done. Nothing more God needs to do. There is nothing more God needs to do except for 
probably just talk to you a bit. <laughs> just be like, all right, Eden, let me show you why it's finished. Let me show you what it means to have a marriage that honors me, to have a marriage of purpose. Eden, let me show you what it means to be a godly parent. So, but, but the provision, the source, all the things that we need, it's done in Jesus. So God doesn't need to do anything more. It's already done and waiting for us. Every promise is yes and amen in Christ Jesus, not in our good works, not in us coming to him perfect, not in us living the perfect life. He knows we're not perfect. That's why he sent a savior. <laughs> but some of these things, they catch us, don't they? We get caught up in the smallest of lies. And it's like we almost need to, we need to bring them to God and go, God, I'm struggling with such and such, this, this thought or this, will you show me in your word? Will you bring someone across my path to minister to me on this? Because what does, for I know the plans end with? To give you a hope and a future, then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. There's this all thing and God can call all of us, all of our heart. Why? Because he went all in first. He was the leader. He modeled it for us. He went all in and held nothing back. And he goes, now you go all in, Eden, and just watch. Just watch what I can do with your life. When you surrender it completely to me, you trust me, you trust what I say in my word, and you don't let anybody else tell you different. You don't let them. Eden, it's up to you how you guard your heart. It's up to you who you say is true and let God be true, Eden, and every man a liar. These are some really important decisions we have to make in order to live in more. And our kids need us to get this. Oh man, like I understand now when, when my dad would talk about how he was raised and how he wanted to teach his children so that they could step on his shoulders and not have to go through the same maybe religious indoctrination and things he had to work through. Man, I can set my kids on an even stronger level by really making sure that I'm building my life on the rock and I'm not letting anything obstruct it. And then I think about my kids and I go, Oh man, this took a little while for me to get, but I could help my kid get it way sooner than me. I just, I love it. I get it. How the Bible says one generation will tell the next generation. Imagine what would happen if us as a church really took God at his word and didn't let anything get in our way. What would that look like? And that's what you need to do. That's one of the things I loved that my dad would talk about is that the word will paint a new picture. It's, it's imagination. It's vision. When you meditate on the word, it's not to prove to God that you're a Christian. We don't read our Bible to fill some quota, to check off a checklist. You read your Bible to know the truth. Because if I know the truth, it sets me free. And as I read the Bible, I'm spending time with him because it's spirit and it's life. So when you change your perspective of what this textbook for life is, you start to just really look forward to it. When you get rid of the religion and the indoctrination and the, you gotta read your Bible, you gotta read it. Well, that doesn't sound fun, <laughs> you know? No, Eden, you can know God. Oh, that's exciting. I can know God. Yeah, and Eden, you can draw from him whenever you need. You can call out to him and he'll listen. Wow, I'd like to know more. <laughs> wow, what does that mean? What does it mean that I'm his child? What does it mean that I can walk in perfect peace? Well, Eden, he wants to show you. And if you read his word and you spend time in relationship, you'll be able to hear from him. It's not that he's quiet. It's not that he's telling Pastor Doug, but he's not telling you. It's how well we tune our ears to hear. It's how well we pull ourselves back from the distractions and the busyness of life. Have you tried to talk to your spouse or your kids when they're distracted? <laughs> Enough said, right? You understand what I'm saying. <laughs> it's the same with God. He's not gonna shout in your face and try to control you because love is a choice. Love, God didn't make a bunch of robots. 
Thank goodness he made, so, like, look at us. We're all so different. We all come from such different backgrounds. And no matter how we were born or what house we were raised in, it's the same promises for every single one of us, no matter how you started out. Because some people will say, well, Eden, easy for you. You grew up in a Christian home. And hey, I didn't grow up perfect. No one's perfect. But it doesn't matter how we were raised in this world. When you come to God, it's equal opportunity. It's equal spirit. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in you, lives in me. It has nothing to do with how you were raised or, or, or what mistakes you made or what addictions or, or that maybe you lost your first marriage. That has nothing to do with how much power you can draw from God or who he is to you. And we let those things become hangups in our life. And I'm saying you can walk free of it right now. You could just make the decision. Hallelujah, God. Thank you that I'm saved by grace, faith in Jesus, and by grace he saved me, the word says. So it's not because I came to him in good works. It's because he saved me through his son, Jesus. And when I put faith in him, so there's some things we need to know. And I mean, I'd love to teach you at all, but we can't be here for a week. So well, I don't even know how long it would take. I don't know how long it would take, but here's the beauty of God. It's great. Church is so important. Like I've learned so much. I'm, church has always been a priority in my life as a kid. And my kids now are always like, how, how many sleeps till church, mom? Like how many sleeps? And I love seeing the zeal for God's house on my kids. And um, when you're part of a life-giving church like this, because not all churches are life-giving, um, when you're part of a life-giving church, people, pastors who've surrendered their will to God and they say, Lord, we want to build your church. And we know we don't need to be perfect, but we need to be submitted. We need to be surrendered to you and all that you're going to do. Um, it's incredible what you can learn and grow in and what God does. This is how cool God is. I'm speaking a message right now, and, and I would hear my dad say it all the time. He'd, he'd, people would stop him in the hall and go, great message, pastor. And then he'd say, oh, what, what? What, like, what really hit you today? Like, what, what did you get out of the message? And they'd say something that he knows he didn't say. But, but then he realized over time of ministering is that Holy Spirit takes the word and he ministers it to you because I don't know all of you. But that's okay. God knows you. And I'm letting him use me. And I'm saying, Lord, I want your words to be my words. And if you're sitting here today and you're humbling yourself and you're saying, God, I want all that you have for me. And you're just, you're, you're open. You're ready to receive from God. Holy Spirit will talk to you about your situations through the word. And that's why people would come up and go, well, you said, I loved when you said this. And he's like, I didn't say that. Because Holy Spirit takes the word and he brings things to your remembrance. He teaches you. He ministers to you. And he's the best helper. Um, so we need to know who God is. We need to know all that he's given us in Christ Jesus. If you don't know what he's given you, it's going to be real easy for the enemy to steal, kill, destroy. It's going to be so simple. And um, I don't want you to get to the end of your life and go, what? Shoot. <laughs> you don't need to wait till the end of your life to get it all together. You can start today and say, Lord, I want to, I want to know who you are. I want to know what you've given me in Christ Jesus because it's mine. It has my name on it. It has your name on it. This word is written to you personally, intimately, and God will communicate it to you that way. And that is what's so amazing is when you get rid of religion and you, and you realize, no, God's with me always, and I can draw on him, and I can understand who he made me to be and all that he's given me. Ephesians 1, 3 to 6 says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Has God blessed you? Yes. <laughs> and has he blessed you with a little? <laughs> a lot. Sounds like more. <laughs> Sounds like I'm called to live in more. Sounds like I can receive all that he's given me in Christ. In Christ. And it goes on to say that he chose us before the foundation of the world. It's one of my favorite verses. That even before he made the world, he knew you in his heart. He saw you and he chose to love you. That's how incredible this love is. It really had nothing to do with, with you and your efforts and your abilities. He just went, 
I can't wait to create Eden. I can't wait to create Joe. I can't wait to see the things we're going to do together. I can't wait. He just was so excited to love you. He is love. And love needs something to love. <laughs> and love is patient. And love is kind. And love is gentle. So don't say God is something he's not. Love is not hard and cruel and persecuting. Love is patient. It believes the best. It hopes all things. It believes all things. That is the attributes of who God is. And when we know these things and we receive these things, when I say no, I mean you've received it. You've, you've said this is the truth. And this is what I am going to build my life on, like we sang today. It's the rock. It's what brings me life. And you'll find that life in you wherever you go. Galatians 2.20 says, My old identity has been co-crucified with Christ and no longer lives. I think some people are trying to live out of that old man. And that's why they're, they're just coming up dry constantly because, um, you know, when you realize the truth of what happened at the cross, the old you died with Jesus. And when Jesus rose again, you rose again with him to new life. Because the Bible says that when Christ, when God's spirit comes to dwell in you, you become a new creation, a new creature, a new species. Some, some textbooks of the Bible say like that's like every verse I've shared today, you could spend a week meditating on just one verse and allowing God to pull things out of it. It's just so special. It's so special what God's done for us and how we can choose to live in more and that nothing has to stand in our way. But what we have to get straight is that my life is not my own. <laughs> Why would I ever think it's my own? I, I didn't make me. God made me. God planned me and formed me in my mother's womb, and before a day even came to be, he wrote good things for me every day, and I could choose not to walk in those things. People miss it all the time. People go to their grave missing it, and I'm on a mission to do my part <laughs> to help people realize you can live in more, and it's in Jesus that you do that. It's not in your own self. It's not in your own strength. And hallelujah, because how many times in my life have I just thrown up my hands? I can't do this, God. <laughs> and he's like, good, let me do it through you. Let me do it through you. And you find there is this rest that Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and burnt out on religion, the message Bible says, and I will give you rest. And you find that in knowing him, there's a rest, there's a peace. And then people look at you and go, Eden, your dad just died. How are you preaching? How are you so happy? Because my happiness does not come from my circumstances or what this world shows me. My happiness comes from the truth of his word. My dad just went home a little earlier than he should have, and I'm going to be home with him one day, and we have a mission, and no matter what I see or what I do, I believe that I have a peace that passes all understanding. And even in the hardest times that you walk through, if you give him all of your heart, you will be so glad that you did. Because, because all I can say to people is, I don't know, it's not me. I know it's not me because I'm not that smart. I'm not that gifted in and of myself. And you might think I'm putting myself down, but I'm not. I want to glorify Jesus. I was made to let him live through me. And so that's the union I want. And we'll end here. It says, now the essence of this new life is no longer mine. For the anointed one lives his life through me. This is the Passion Translation. We live in union as one. The Bible says, how can two walk together unless they agree? How do you live in more? You, you have to get into agreement with Jesus. And it's not, all right, God, this is what I want. We got to get an agreement, me and you. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> that is a disaster waiting to happen right there. No. Eden, did you make the earth, sun, moon, and the stars? Eden, I mean, I know I birthed my children, but I sure did not make them. I can't take credit for that. I look at them. I have conversations with them. They share with me what, what they, they don't know it's Holy Spirit, but I can tell it's Holy Spirit communicating to them. And they'll share a song they wrote for God. Or, and I go, Lord, look at what you made. I can't take credit for that, God. So thank you. 
praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, that, that you are the maker and you are the giver of all good things and you've given me everything I need for life and godliness. I lack no good thing as I seek him. But if I believe I do, I'm not going to be able to receive everything he has. So it just, it re I hope you realize it takes a lot of responsibility on our part. It takes a lot of waking up to, I got it wrong. And I'm okay to get it wrong because I'd rather get it right in Jesus. <laughs> so I'm okay. I'm not going to beat myself up because even all the mistakes we've made in our past, God can redeem anything. So don't, don't shortchange God. Don't believe him for just all the way. And it's like, Lord, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I know that you won't let us feel robbed. I know that you lead and guide us into all truth and that's where I live. And so we need to declare, this is not my life and I get in union with Jesus. So I need to come into agreement with him. A soft answer turns away wrath. Okay, Eden, soft answers. Be quick to forgive, Eden. Okay, Lord. What does Joshua 1, 8, 8 say? Meditate on this book day and night. Observe what it says. This life of living in more is an active one. <laughs> it's changing the habits you have, how you speak to your spouse, how you raise your kids. The Bible is full of such simple, clear principles, wisdom principles of how to talk to your spouse, how to deal with regret or offense. And if you tell yourself, I don't care how I feel, I'm just going to do it. I don't care if I feel like I want to get revenge and I just want to show this person that they're wrong. And no, Eden, quick to forgive, just as your father in heaven has already forgiven you. So how can you be quick to forgive? It's because he lives in you. Why are you strong by knowing your God? Because he's strong and he's in you. It's not out of your strength. It's not out of your power. It's by his spirit, right? So when we know these things and we get these things clear and we just surrender, and we just humble ourselves. It says, cast your cares on him. Because what are you going to do with those cares? You, you're going to make a mess of them. We are right now. We are all making a mess of our life somewhere because we, we are taking care of something we were never meant to take care of. So we cast them on God and then we humble ourselves under his mighty hand. Right? So we can do that. And when you do, you get a little bit addicted to letting go and letting God. <laughs> You're like, oh, why did I make it so difficult? Why did, I, why did I try this in my own strength? Why did I let other people tell me who you are, God? I need to just take you at your word. And I need to let you teach me. But I need to know, I need to know all that you are, all that you've given me. And I ran out of time. But my last point was know all that he made you to be. So this, as we wrap up, these are some things that as you're reading your Bible, as you're learning from the pastors here on stage, as you're meditating day and night, which just means stay in the word. And what I find is throughout my days, God brings to remembrance his word. What I've put into me, he'll go, Eden, fear not for the Lord your God is with you. And it's like, right, God, I will not fear because you're with me. And he, he ministers to you. I love it. He just ministers to you through the word that you plant in your heart. So keep planting it. Keep spending time with him. Keep, keep just su submitting yourself to him and watch just how much more he has for you. Ephesians 3.20, never doubt God's mighty per power to work in you. It's his power working in you. You have to decide to move. You have to decide to act, to make decisions, to change how you speak to your family, to change what you think about finances. He can't force you. He can lead you. What did he say? I'll hold you by the hand and I will guide you. I will lead you down paths, but you have to follow. You can't, paralysis of analysis, my dad would call it. Not making a decision is still making a decision and it's not a good one. <laughs> you know, you gotta go, all right, Lord, I'm gonna trust that what you made is good and that you put me on here for a purpose and that you've anointed me, but I have to open my mouth. I have to bless someone. I have to use what you've given me and know that you go with me and know that I'm not always gonna get it right. But as long as I stay surrendered and humble and I stay in relationship with you every day, I might make mistakes, but they're not going to be intentional. 
Those are the best kind of mistakes to make. Not the ones where you get angry and you, and you make a mistake on purpose because you just didn't spend time with God and get a revelation of his truth, right? So he knows how to perfectly lead you. That's what I've found is he, he's perfect. And I'm so grateful he is because he knows how to perfectly love you. He knows how to perfectly lead you. He knows how to help work, work out all your baggage. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't need scars in your life. He's gonna show you wholeness. He's gonna show you perfection in all that he has for you. Would you bow your heads with me? We're just going to close in prayer. God is so good. Yeah, go ahead. Lift up a hand for God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you've just been with us all the way through today. Thank you that your word is power and life, that it, it accomplishes what it's sent forth to do. God, I thank you that, that limiting beliefs and, and wrong thoughts that we had about you or about ourselves are being broken right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're ministering to each and every one because you love us. The word says that you comfort us, that you're our helper, you're our teacher, you're our standby, you're our strengthener, Lord. And um, God, we're going to put our trust in you. As we trust in you, as we acknowledge you in all of our ways, you direct our paths. As we don't lean on us, but we get in agreement with you. We're one with you, like your word says, Lord. And so right now, with every head bowed and eye closed, if you're here today and you, and you want to know God, and you're like, I didn't know I could know him like that. I didn't know he wanted to be with me forever. I didn't know that he wanted to teach me how to live my life and how to, how to make better choices and how to, how to bless others and to go into all the world and help people. We're, we're called to something great. Uh, if that's you today, I, we would love to pray with you. We'd love to. It's a simple prayer. The Bible says that whosoever, there's there's no requirements. Whosoever believes on Jesus, that he died for them, that he rose again, that he saved you from your own mistakes, your own mess, that he won't perish, but that he'll have everlasting life, eternal life. And that's not just heaven, that's life on earth, everlasting life on earth. And if that's you today, we'd love to pray with you. With no one looking around except for me, would you just raise your hand so I know that you're praying this prayer with us today? Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Anyone else in this place? We'd love to pray with you. Awesome. Best decision you could ever make. Would we pray this together? Dear God, I thank you that you sent your son. I believe that Jesus died for me and I wanna follow you. Thank you that you've filled me with your presence and you're never gonna leave me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can we congratulate those who prayed that prayer today? The best prayer. The most miraculous moment in your life with God is when God's spirit comes and fills you. And I want to encourage you, if you prayed that prayer today or you've prayed it recently in the last couple weeks or months, um, don't leave today after service without stopping by our Connections kiosk, just right there in the back. And we've got some great leaders, people who love you, who'd love to get to know you and just give you a little bit more information of this decision you made and the tools that you're going to need. We want to get you a Bible, especially a Bible. The word that's what I taught from today. It wasn't my own thoughts. It wasn't my own geniusness. This is God's word. It's for all of us. And so be sure to do that. Stop by the Connections kiosk uh, once service is over in a few minutes. And um, thank you. It's been a blessing to be here. And I love to teach the word. And it's incredible what happens when we take that word and we live it. Amen. Amen.